It's been a difficult economic calendar year for many Nigerians and it seems things would get worse in the run up to the big Christmas season shopping as consumer prices has risen to its highest since October 2005. Welcome to Business Zone, I'm Tolu Lokwe Ogujobi. After a year that has seen Africa's largest economy slip into its first recession in decades, data from Nigeria's National Bureau of Statistics shows inflation has risen for the 12th consecutive month to 18.3%, an 11-year high. The record high inflation rate is compounded by Nigeria's slowing economy and high unemployment rates. Experts say Nigeria's problems are tied to the government's falling revenues uh, for much more uh, for much of the past year. The low price of oil, Nigeria's main export, has triggered a foreign exchange crisis which drove up costs for businesses that depend on imported items and raw materials. The lingering situation poses a po problem uh, for millions of Nigerians uh, with the coming uh, festive season. Now, let's see this trend of Nigerians' inflation in the last six months. Now, now starting from May, 15.1%, and uh, that's about 1.9% points in excess of the previous month uh, when it stands, uh, we stood at 13.7%. Now, in June, it's at 16 point, consumer prices surged 16.2% uh, year on year, following a 15.6% jump in May. Uh, figures came above market expectation, uh, that's of the 16.2% increase, mostly driven by sharper rising costs of food, housing and utilities. Moving to July now, we have uh, the consumer prices jumped by 16.9%. Uh, that's, um, that's, um, that's for July 2016, following a 16.5% increase in the previous month, compared to the market expectation of 17.15% rise. Now looking at August, um, the consumer price rose 17.6%, following a 17.1% gain in July. Now, as we can see here in September, uh, following this 17.6% rise in August, and in line with market expectations, and finally, as we stand in October, it's 18.3%, um, the highest. Uh, meanwhile, the presidency has warned of a possible uh, famine in the country from early next year. This, is, this follows a huge demand in the global market, uh, targeting the country's surplus production. The presidential spokesman says huge demand for Nigeria's grains in the global market uh, is creating an excellent environment for the mindless exports of Nigerian food across the borders. And unless this is curtailed, Nigerian markets will be lacking grains by January next year. Let's turn our attention to our guest. I have with me in the studio an economist, Henry Boyo. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Tolu. <clears throat> Yes, infl inflation keeps soaring now as we stand 18.3% since the beginning of the year. Is this all this economy can offer? Well, I would say it's surprising that we are still hovering around 18.3%. Uh, the situation could be much, much worse uh, if you considered <coughs> the various uh, headwinds that have been... Um, uh, besieging the Nigerian economy, particularly in this last one year. Uh, most notably, of course, was the very huge devaluation of the Naira, uh, which immediately um, pulled out consumer uh, purchasing demand uh, from the system. At the same time, you found that the cost of raw materials, which are used in production, also spiked um, substantially. So with those two um, factors, it's uh, very surprising, especially with the magnitude of the, uh, of the rate of devaluation. Uh, it's really surprising that um, we are still talking of 18.3% uh, rate of inflation, even though this is the highest uh, rate we've ha had according to the Bureau in the last 11 years. 
That's alarming. Now, now, the components of the headline inflation, we've identified some of them. That's food, electricity prices, and also transportation. Now, to me, these are basic needs. How will a normal Nigerian, the man on the street, cope at this time? Well, <laughs> that's a tough one. Um, but the reality, of course, is that uh, you cut your coat according to your cloth. I mean, that's the bottom line for the average Nigerian. Uh, if you could afford one loaf of bread uh, for your family uh, on a daily basis, you may have to share one loaf between two days or even three days, as the case may be, unless, of course, you had other sources of income, uh, which might not be genuine or legal ways of making money. Uh, but you'd find that, unfortunately, most Nigerians would be pressurized to consider um, underhand activities uh, in order to be able to survive. And indeed, these underhand activities uh, will be acclaimed as uh, God's intervention, uh, usually. Uh, and morality is usually kicked to the background uh, because at the time, what you want most is survival. You need to survive. So you um, might get into all sorts of uh, odd jobs and odd um, practices, which are totally um, not uh, above board. And, um, but I, I, I can only say that it's going to be tough. I, I, I can't lie. I mean, it's going to be very, very tough because, you know, it's one thing uh, to expect a turnaround, but if the indices continue to show that we haven't even halted the decline, then, of course, we need to be very, very worried indeed. For the average Nigerian, uh, I hate to say that all you need to do is spray and cut your coat according to your cloth. But truly, I don't see any other way out at the moment. Any other way out? That, 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 that brings me to, to the issue of government's efforts in trying to resolve some of this. We know we are in recession. And just a few weeks ago, there was an issue of a loan trying to spend our way out of it, which I know you've not actually um, followed that line because you said you don't agree with spending out of um, recession. But that has not been approved, and that's an issue that's been on the front burner. What do you think about that move? How do we, we need to get ourselves out of this? And a lot of policies that are coming on uh, the fiscal side, the monetary side. How do we get this right? Thank you, Tolu. It's very worrying. And I, <clears throat> I am particularly worried because there seems to be a conspiracy uh, to ensure that we get this loan, uh, whether we like it or not. It's going to be pushed down our throats. And that would be rather unfortunate. Uh, if the um, uh, government does not listen to wise counsel, and by wise counsel, I mean people who are saying that it absolutely makes no sense for you to be paying already out of every 100 naira you earn as a country, you're spending almost 40 naira to service your debts. And um, this, is, uh, this new debt would almost uh, double the debt burden on the country. And consequently, over time, you would expect that the service charges, which are being demanded for the debts you carry, might also double. And if that happens to be the case in the next five years, especially when the $30 billion or so uh, does not include the um, possibility of serial deficits, which we are likely to have in the next five years, because you don't have yet a viable option of bringing in income so that you can have a balanced budget. Indeed, I don't think anyone is considering a balanced budget for the next five years. And consequently, if we followed the trend of uh, the current year where the deficit was about 2 point something trillion naira, even if we say deficit is going to be 2 point something trillion naira for the next four or five years, you're talking of almost 10 trillion. That's another 18, uh, I beg your pardon, another 18 billion dollars more on top of the debt uh, that we already have in addition to the 30 billion dollars that we are also, uh, that is also imminent at the moment. Yeah. So if that happens, uh, I, I really am worried about this because people don't seem to understand what it means to say, look, I, for example, I earn a, hundred, a, a million naira a year. And out of that one million naira, after paying taxes and things like that, I happen to be spending 50% of that million naira I earn annually in order to service debts. Mm. So consequently, what's going to happen? I have 500,000 naira left, left, and that's going to be used for... Uh, uh, my usual expenses, the consumer expenses, pay my school, f school fees of my children, pay for food, pay for rent if I'm uh, in the rented apartment, and so on and so forth. 
what else will I have available to put into savings? It's unlikely to, uh, uh, to be meaningful. So consequently, uh, you will only end up borrowing again the next year. And that's only uh, <laughs> jeopardizing we're, we're, we're gonna take it. We're going to take it from there. We have to go on a short break now and we'll be back with more on Business Zone. Please stay with us. Now, thanks for staying with us. You're still watching Business Zone, and uh, I have with me in the studio an economist, Henry Boyo. We've been looking at the issues surrounding inflation in Nigeria, which, um, according to the um, data from the Nigerian Bureau of Statistics, now stands at 18.3% as of uh, October, and we've been giving insights to this. Now, before we went on that break, I'm still going to stay on the issue of that loan because I'm looking at a way that we could get out of recession. That is what I'm actually at. But at the Debt Management Office, we were, were able to get the director general who spoke to us and he explained that Nigeria has not actually exceeded um, the budget or what we could lend or what we could borrow from international financial um, corporation or companies. So he's saying that we could go ahead and borrow and even the, the, the rate for payment is um, really, really considerable. That it's, it's, it's affordable for the country. Well, now, what do you make of, of this? Uh, we must be very careful. Uh, of uh, the kind of admonitions that you get from the debt management office. Uh, uh, indeed, when the debt management office was created, uh, I think about in 2006 or thereabouts, I, uh, I, I christened it as the debt creation office because before the, uh, the advent of the DMO, the reality, of course, was that uh, we only had one trillion naira worth of debt and uh, of domestic debt, and we had about $3.5 billion worth of uh, external debt. Uh, today, uh, we now have, um, uh, with this new loan, we probably have about 40, 50 billion naira worth of um, uh, ex external debt. And then we'll also have, uh, what, for domestic debt, we'll probably have another 30 billion. Basically, we're thinking, we, we, it, it seems we'll have almost $90 billion worth of debt uh, when uh, the, the loan of 29 billion is, is, been, is been consolidated. What that means, you see, um, if, if, if you allow me to say so, I would say the DMO is a little bit mischievous. If you go to um, uh, a canteen and uh, the food is all bad, uh, the owner of the canteen will still encourage you to say, ah, can't you see, it's even better than, <laughs> than next door or something like that for you to eat. Um, it is true that the Nigeria's debt to GDP ratio is still within acceptable threshold. I understand it's about 12% or something like that. But that's just neither here nor there. The critical part is the ability to pay back. Uh, somebody will say, ah, but they have bigger debts elsewhere. Yeah, but they're able to pay. In our case, we have gotten to the situation where we are almost at the point of using 50% of every cobble that we earn or 50% of every naira that we earn in order to pay debt. Anybody who's telling you to ignore that is either mischief or is being deliberately, um, how would I say it, um, there's something to be gained by that person. Mm. Because you really don't, look, this is, <laughs> this is no joke. In any language, in any country whatsoever, yeah. if you earn one million naira, and every year out of that one million naira, you are spending 500,000 naira to service your debt, not even to repay. And meanwhile, you still have those outstanding expenses like feeding, uh, accommodation, transportation, school children going to school, health facilities and things like health, health expenses and things like that. And somebody tells you, oh, don't you worry. Uh, you are still within the threshold of uh, uh, good practice borrowing or something like that. That person is deliberately mischievous because he's pushing you into a debt trap. I tell you something. In uh, 2006, when we went out of the debt trap, yeah. uh, uh, the, the Paris Club debt, Paris. debt deal, uh, what was so worrying. We were told we were owing $30 billion. Now, this new loan puts us in a situation where we are owing, what, $90 billion. And the people who are going to conjure up and cook up those debts and manage it are telling you, don't worry. Of course, they won't be here mm -hmm. in five or six or seven or eight or 10 years, even indeed in 20 years' time. The issue about external loans being very cheap is neither here nor there, even if it is 2%, okay? It is 2% and it looks very good. Um, it should be easy to pay, but will it be easy to pay if the Naira continues to depreciate from, mm. say, 500 Naira to a dollar to maybe 5,000 Naira to a dollar? Your 2% external loan 
then becomes as difficult to pay as if it was carrying a 20% rate of interest. At that point, it means you have to work 10 times more to end the amount of Naira that would be sufficient for you to pay your debt. And somebody tells you, don't worry, you should be careful of people like this. Almost, almost finally now, just like, just like a report I read earlier, so the presidency is now coming to warn that there's a possibility of famine by next year. That's to talk about grain scarcity and talking about we've increased expectation and um, because of that we need to check, um, we need to, the, the food security is actually being threatened. No, that, that's, an, that's another thing we really need to look at. What, what, what do we make of this? We want to export, we want to make for, get foreign exchange. And now we're actually going out of our way now to even change ourselves. That's the way it looks to me. Uh, thank you. Um, to, I think that's a contradiction. You know, we say we don't have enough food, or at least the impression you normally get is that we're not producing enough. Now we are being told that not only are we producing enough, but the truth is most of what we're producing uh, will be going out of the country. Uh, you must ask yourself why. Uh, a businessman is interested in making profit, okay? That is the whole essence of business. But if you find that it is more profitable for you to export yeah. your goods, yeah. and everybody will say, well, you know, this is why I say it's a contradiction. You are saying, let us export. And <laughs> you now find that you have excess for export and you're complaining that, ah, if you export everything, <laughs> we are going to end up with farming. But the truth, of course, is that the real McCoy, the real uh, destabilizing uh, uh, factor within the whole system is that of exchange rate. Mm -hmm. uh, the same thing that you're seeing within this agricultural sector, this export of grains, of our grains, uh, while we are at the same time uh, uh, importing similar products, the, the significant factor here is the exchange rate. The way the Naira is at the moment, it is cheaper for people to come from outside to buy our grains. In the same manner that you find that forever there has been this um, smuggling of petroleum products out of the country. Because of what? Because the Naira is very weak. So long as the Naira is weak, you will not be able to stop petrol exportation out of the country, even though we first imported, it will still go out to all the neighboring countries. In the same manner, because you also have a very cheap Naira, almost a worthless Naira, it is easier for people from outside to buy up your foodstuffs. So until you address, you might not have seen the connection between what is happening and the exchange rate, but the reality of course is that it is the Naira exchange rate that is responsible for smuggling out of petrol and also smuggling out of grains because why the naira has become so weak if the reverse was the case what do you think would happen mm -hmm. if the naira became a hundred naira to, to a dollar instead of four or five hundred naira as the case may be what you would find is that it would become much more expensive for people from outside the country to say they want to buy our grains it will be here for us to consume by the same token also the same thing applies to fuel you will find that fuel will be available when the Naira becomes stronger. And when the Naira becomes stronger, uh, uh, the, the interesting thing is that fuel will also be cheaper. cheaper. I must thank you for your time, Economist Henry Boyu, for your time on Business Zone and giving insight into these issues. Thank you very much. It's my pleasure. Well, let's now tell you what the market is trading across the continent. Many markets closed red on Tuesday after lower transactions on their floors. Starting with the market in Kenya, it closed weak with the index down 0.20%. Analysts say that many investors showed in sales of holdings, uh, which caused the entire market to swing downwards. In Botswana, the market closed weak due to profit taken by investors. The appetite for new investment portfolios uh, won considerably uh, uh, as many people moved for profits. Now the Nigerian market closed in a negative territory following persistent sales pressure. The bite in inflation and impact of recession forced many investors to go out on the market, uh, of the market. And finally, the market in Ghana closed weak. The drop in prices on stocks combined uh, to cause investments runoff in late. Uh, Ghana has recorded weak stock prices since January. The oil market stayed mixed on Tuesday as global players focused on developments in the United States. At the London market, the Brent trades at higher price of $45 per barrel. Early trade recorded gains above $1 as dealers studied supply chain. 
the OPEC basket brand steadies at $41 per barrel. Well, that's our package for you today on Business Zone. Join us another time for more insightful analysis. I am Tulu Lokpe Ogunjobi. I'll leave you with the figures of the exchange rate as it stands today. On behalf of the entire production crew, bye for now.